games are in one place now on Windows. FS4 is coming to NVIDIA GPUs and AMD just, they just keep doing it. They won't stop. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, September 17, 2025. We're gonna start off today with what I forgot to start off with yesterday, which was thanks to everybody who showed up at the community day. We had a great time. It was a fun event where a lot of people came and said goodbye to me. We gave away a whole bunch of stuff from the office that we didn't want. And we actually uh, raised a significant amount of money for the center in Pretoria, South Africa for those who have special needs and disabilities, so it was a great time all around. We have a live auction, we had a silent auction that turned into a live auction. We also just had plenty of stuff to give away, as well as uh, we do have the grand prizes extending from that, the Falcon Northwest Tiki, which you can see has the South African flag as well as a custom UFD design from Falcon Northwest. They sponsored that, it's a $5,000 mini ITX computer. And this is the Falcon Northwest Talon, which we reviewed ages ago. I upgraded to a 5090, has Reese's face on it. That's gonna also be the grand prize for this month, which is happening over on our Twitch streams. If you wanna come check that out, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. Everybody who donates to this campaign can also get entered. Everybody who showed up to the community day also got extra entries. So just a big thanks to everybody who uh, made that possible. It was a great time. Lots of fun, and now I get to leave. I get to uh, head out of here soon. That's the plan. But what's heading in to Windows is Microsoft trying to make Xbox a unified experience over there, and it turns out that they have now launched the completed version of their Xbox app that will unify video game stores together on Windows. So that means things like Steam, Epic Games, GOG, Xbox, Battle.net, all of that can be found in the Xbox app. This aggregated gaming library is essentially there so that they can have it ready for the launch of the Xbox ROG Ally, Xbox Ally X, Asus handhelds, those gaming handhelds that are basically Xbox, but they're still Windows PCs. Anyways, they're launching it for that, but it is available for everybody who wants to use it on Windows. I'm curious, are you planning on switching over to this to have a unified launcher that's built into the Microsoft ecosystem? Is this something that intrigues you? I personally still just get very frustrated with the Xbox app and how uh, limited it feels compared to things like Steam. But at the same time, if I could still have access to Steam using this, I could see myself, especially in a gaming handheld scenario, utilizing this more often, expanding my horizons, if you will. But you know where I'm definitely expanding my horizons? With today's video sponsor. <laughs> you didn't smell that? Yeah, it's me, but in a good way. I've been embarking on my scent journey for a few months now, and I gotta say, I'm having a great time. Plus, the office also smells great now. This month, it seems today's sponsor, Scentbird, has sent over some fragrances to push me a little further out of my comfort zone. Scentbird has been great for two main reasons, convenience and portability. With new scents arriving every month, I'm able to mix up what I smell like, and the case keeps my sample safe and secure. We actually recently held an eight-hour community meetup day, and stashing away a little bottle from Scentbird kept me smelling fresh throughout the whole time. This month, though, it looks like Scentbird has guided me slightly out of my original comfort zone. Starting off, off, I tried the Harmonist by Sumforce. This is a nice, light, and bright scent, led by notes of Hawaiian pomelo, saffron, some sweetness added with notes of organic honey, and some earthy tones rounding out with sandalwood and musk. I would say this is strongly an everyday wear. Smells great, but nothing too intense. Next up, I tried Apsu by Ulrich Lang New York. Similar to the previous scent, this is a very bright and herbal scent, typically not in my wheelhouse, but I'm actually really enjoying this one, with notes of cilantro, white tea, iris, white musk and cedarwood, this scent has a crisp, bright start, an herby and floral middle, and gently earthy finish. A simple yet refined scent, again, great for everyday wear, particularly in the spring or summer season. Another unexpected winner for me is Dark Rum by Malin and Getz. This scent starts off familiar to me with bergamot, but continues to expand my horizons with the addition of plum, rum, vanilla, and Milk. This fragrance reminds me of a nice mixed drink. Definitely the rum influence. This would be perfect for a night out. And last but not least, we have Tea Tonic by Miller Harris. This one might be my favorite of this month's batch. With notes of bergamot, lemon, and green tea, this is a light and citrus filled scent rounded off by Mai Tai tea and birch tar for some herbal earthiness. Another scent perfect for summer that can be worn all day to dinner or probably even a night out. If you're like me, still figuring out what scents you like, go ahead and do yourself a favor by taking Scentbird's quiz. This will encourage you to experiment with fragrances that match your personal preferences, so every month of Scentbird is something new for you to enjoy. If you're interested in trying Scentbird, scan the QR code or use the link below, and with my coupon code UFD, you'll get 55% off at Scentbird. Plus, 
you'll get free delivery to your door in a free case. You get the product for half of the price. That's just $8. It's a steal. Big thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring. Well, while Scentbird passes the sniff test, it's not quite clear if this TikTok deal that's happening is gonna pass it because America and China has now officially agreed to a new deal with regards to TikTok, which was supposed to be banned today in the United States after a whole bunch of delays. It looks like it's getting delayed again, but for the first time since America and the Trump administration have been saying that there's gonna be a deal made with regards to TikTok becoming a US company, the Chinese government is now also backing that up, saying that that will likely happen. It appears like the idea of what's going to go forth is that TikTok will be transferred into US ownership. A company will be able to take over the uh, assets of of TikTok USA. However, the algorithm will still somehow be tied to the Chinese algorithm of the original TikTok app. So there's not a full divestment that's happening. Allegedly, this is still being hammered out all of those details, but this is the first time that both the American and Chinese governments have come out and said that a deal should happen moving forward. Still needs to go through the US Congress, but we'll keep you updated as all of that progresses here. But there also have been some developments with regards to media streaming codex with AV2 hitting the announcement circles, the video codex based on AV1, but better getting improved AR and VR setup, split screen stuff. It's going to have better compression to make it so that you don't have to use as much data. The company behind it says that it marks a milestone on the path to open the innovative future of media experiences. Essentially, AV1 was developed to be a royalty free alternative to HEVC, even though it hasn't really seen full adoption in all various centers. AV1 is still very slowly rolling out to things like streaming platforms, at least with content creation on that side. Netflix has been using it for quite some time. YouTube's been using it for serving videos, but they haven't really so much been using it for live streams. Twitch has only recently rolled that out. So it appears like AV2 is now going to hit the streets. AV1 uh, still trying to get some major adoption, but Microsoft wants a major adoption for their Copilot app. And so they're just going to give it to you. You have to have it. Take it now. As of next month, you cannot opt out of getting Microsoft Copilot's app delivered to your PC if you have the 365 desktop application. It's just going to happen. It's going to start in October. It's going to finish by mid-November. If you have one of those, Microsoft is going to give it to you. You have to have Copilot. There is no if, ands, or buts, or about it. Doesn't matter if Windows 10 is dying and you are forced to be on Windows 11 and it came pre-installed with Windows 365. Hopefully, you should be able to to uninstall it once it is installed, but you can't stop it from installing itself from the very beginning. And when a lot of people say, you know, things like Microsoft is malware and all that kind of stuff, maybe this is the things that they're referring to per chance. Well, we'll think about that while Reese, not this one, the one in South Africa, gives you some good deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet, and here's your deals for the day. Starting off, we have this Cooler Master Master Liquid Light 120L Core AIO CPU Liquid Cooler for only $44.99, making it $15 off. But then next, we have this G-Skill Ripjaws 5 DDR4 RAM Kit featuring 32 gigs of RAM at $89.99, making it $30.54 off. It's getting hotter and hotter to find DDR4 RAM deals, so here you go. And then lastly, we have this Drop Lord of the Rings Black Speech Wired 10 Keyless Mechanical keyboard for only $109.99, making it $119.01 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like if you wanted FSR 4 on a non-RX 9000 series GPU, you're getting a deal because it looks like they're figuring out how to do that. Thanks to a leak of some details with regards to the Int 8 version of FSR 4, people have been able to get it to work on GPUs it was never actually designed for. So, RX 7000, RTX 30 series, you're able to use FSR4 on those things. According to the reports of the people who have used it, it is making it look better. However, it is costing FPS in order to use it. Whereas traditionally with things like FSR4, it's supposed to get you faster FPS with some quality changes. FSR4 on these makes it so that you are getting slower FPS than native, but at the enhancement of some quality upticks that 
are happening, especially compared to things like FSR 3.1. Let me know if you're interested in using FSR 4 on some of your older school GPUs. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments while I tell you about some more older school CPUs that AMD refuses to let die because they're just gonna keep making them new. That's right, new CPUs launching yesterday. We have the 9700F and 9500F hitting the streets, becoming official. But what was also hitting the streets and not quite expected was the 5600F. And if you might be thinking to yourself, isn't that on the old socket? Yes, another AM4 CPU in the year 2025, marking the ninth year that AM4 is getting support from AMD. An insanely long support cycle for this motherboard platform. The 5600F is essentially just a 5600, but slower. The 5600 didn't even have integrated GPU, so it being an F series doesn't really mean a whole lot because the 5600 was also a non-integrated GPU version, but it's likely that this is gonna get rolled out for things like uh, pre-builds and OEMs and all of those kinds of desktops, but yet another CPU being released for this platform, for this socket. And if we were to see this kind of support for AM5, that would mean we would be getting new CPU releases in 2031 or 2032 for the current AM5 socket, which hard to imagine at the time, especially after Intel basically training us to expect two years of a socket support before we had to upgrade and move on. It's no longer that way, thanks to AMD and all of the changes that they've made to the entire industry. And what changes did you make to the things you typed? Let me look and see what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We've got the Frosty Saucer saying, I gotta say, the low-end CPU market will be a fun area to hang out in once AMD remembers that it exists. They're not gonna do that. The uh, margins are too low. Uh, I've read some stuff that it's uh, a little trickier for them to just even make it make sense to release Ryzen 3s. They haven't released a Ryzen 3 CPU since what, the 3300, 3100, that wasn't an APU. We're, we're many, many generations into this and they're not gonna release it. It's just not happening. AMD doesn't care. They're not gonna make the money there. They don't need to compete there. Intel is is it's honestly kind of the budget king when it comes to things that are around $100. You could go back a couple generations to older AMD CPUs to hit that price point, but in, Intel's giving you new stuff right now. And we got Z Shrink saying another roundup of excellent news, but also amazing community day you and the team pulled off. Great job and congratulations. Thank you, Z Shrink. It was a good day. Had good tons, tons of fun. Thank you to everybody who showed up again. As mentioned at the beginning, thank you to everybody who's donated to the campaign uh, to raise money for Pathways Pretoria. It's been fantastic to see that they are getting support, and I just appreciate it. It's been it's been a good time overall. As I'm trying to uh, move on to this next chapter of our lives, and then we got the Crimson Prince saying it's funny seeing Intel still comparing their new chips to 14th Gen Goat and not comparing to their core Ultra series. If this goes on, Intel will definitely die one day. As somebody responded, the CPU they're releasing is the Core Ultra. There's nothing after the 14th series for them to compare it to because this is the Core Ultra. It's the Core Ultra 3205. They didn't release a 100 series for desktop. This is the direct successor. That's why they're doing it. If this goes on, they're just doing the right thing. Of course, they're going to compare the, the 205 to the 14100. That is what it's replacing. There is no intermediary CPU there. I, I totally get Intel makes mis missteps and marketing issues and all that kind of stuff, but this was not one of them. <laughs> and this is not uh, one of the moments where I continue hot news. It's actually the one where I end it. I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News later. Yeah.